This is the new Fujifilm X-S10. This is a Cinedy Review, supported by B&H and CVP. Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinedy and happy birthday to me. And why do I mention such an unimportant detail? Because this is also the birth date of the new Fujifilm X-S10. Well, it's just nice to have a birthday exactly on the same day when a camera is being announced. So, before talking about the camera, I want to keep up the tradition and I want to show you a short documentary that I filmed here in Vienna. And after watching the video, we can come back and talk a little bit about the camera. So, let's watch the video. My name is Namdi, I'm 32-year-old Viennese guy. Where the love for pizza first comes from eating pizza, definitely. That's how you fall in love with pizza. But um, to stay in love with pizza, I think you really need to do it uh, yourself. You need to try at least once. Yes, I was stuck at home like uh, everybody else and I had time to make more pizza than usual. Then of course I posted it also so that people could see it and the reactions were fantastic. Like everyone was saying, oh my God, I want this now, please. Can you bring me one? Can you bring me one? And after a while I thought to myself, sure, why not? I could bring you one. <laughs> so everyone was at home frustrated, so they couldn't go outside. So I thought, okay, maybe I can enlighten their day and, uh, and bring them pizza. So when I talk about falling in love with pizza, it's not talking about buying already made dough and already made sauce from the supermarket. I talk about doing everything from scratch. Ready for takeaway. Apart from selling his homemade pizza online, Namdi, together with his teammates, plays football at the local club. Now that many of the lockdown restrictions have been lifted, they are coming back to do trainings again. I've been playing football since I was uh, seven years old. I started in primary school. I think every little boy who's into football has this dream of becoming a professional football player. I think it's uh, very hard. You have to be super focused from a very young age. And I've been playing football ever since. My mom told me a couple of weeks ago that <laughs> I promised her to buy her a house one day <laughs> when I'm a professional football <laughs> player. <laughs> yeah, sorry mom, it never happened. <laughs> Andy, are you excited about the game today? I'm very excited. Any desires to become Messi? <laughs> the, the train has left the station <laughs> 15 years ago, I guess. <laughs> so no, no desire. Still nice playing football, even if you are not messy. <laughs> All right, we are here. Football as a team sport with the team, you're with them four or five times a week. It's kind of you have to get along because if you don't get along, then you won't synchronize on the pitch and then of course you cannot play as good as you would if you would all get along. But we are all humans, you cannot like everyone and I'm not friends with everyone outside of the pitch. But when we are in training or we have a match, then we are, we always say we are 11 friends.
there is actually a, an equivalent between making pizza and playing football. In both things you sometimes have to be patient. So when you are in front of the goal, you have a lot of things going through your mind and you tend to like be hasty. But if you take a step back, be patient, then you are more likely to score the goal. And it's also kind of that with making the pizza. So you also have to take a step back and be patient, but not too patient. <laughs> Well, in football, there's always a lot of emotion going through you during the game. And this game was just not, it didn't go well for us. It's sometimes a bit annoying, but it's part of the game. It hasn't been a good day for Nandi's team, both inside and outside of the pitch. But there is nothing that a good slice of homemade pizza cannot solve. Thank you, Nandi. That was one of the best pizzas I ever had. Homemade pizzas. And Luciano, thank you very much, as always, for editing the footage. So, Fujifilm XS10. First of all, before talking about the camera, I just want to make sure that you know that I filmed what you just saw with the Fujinon XC, a 15 to 45 millimeter lens, together with the SLR Magic Anamorphic Adapter. Yeah, those two work together very well, but we'll talk about it in a second. First of all, about the camera. This is a new offering from Fujifilm. I just want to compare it actually to the X-T3 size-wise, because I'm filming with the X-T4, so I can't uh, obviously show it. So just that you get an idea how much smaller the camera is. I can also compare it, just one second please, to the a bit older X-T20. Yeah. So first of all about ergonomics. Camera is very compact. For me personally, I love working with small tools. And what Fujifilm did really well here is actually constructing the hand grip quite, you know, it's, it's rather deep. For me, it's really, or it was really uh, easy to hold the camera when I'm running and gunning. At the back of the camera, you can find the joystick, which is almost a, man, a must uh, those days. Very easy to uh, focus, to position your focus and so on. It's a bit a pity that there are no more physical um, FN buttons, but I guess that's part of a compromise when the camera is so small. Let's talk a little bit about specifications. For me personally, the main selling point of this compact camera, besides the size and the video recording capabilities, is the IBIS, the in-body image stabilization. It's quite amazing that Fujifilm managed to put a mechanical IBIS into such a small body. When it comes to actual recording, so you can record up to 4K DCI in up to 30 frames per second, all 8-bit internally, and only long gop. If you're attempting to shoot some slow motion stuff, then the camera can uh, film in full HD up to 240 frames per second, exactly like with the X-T4. When it comes to powering, the camera will use the same exact battery like the X-T3. The reason, obviously, this is a small body and I guess that uh, Fujifilm had to fit something into this uh, body 
and the batteries of the XT4 are simply too large. But that means also that the battery will drain a little bit, a little bit faster, especially because the IBIS is engaged. Uh, on the other hand, when you get this red bar telling you that the uh, battery is almost exhausted, to my surprise, I could still film, I don't know, for, for quite, quite some time. So don't, don't get under panic or don't rush. Uh, yeah, you still have some time to film with the battery. With this compact camera, you have full control on your audio. And if you want to monitor the sound, you better use the supplied uh, USB-C to a mini plug with Fujifilm including in the package. Talking about audio, I really want also to emphasize the audio quality that uh, Fujifilm has in their cameras. As far as I'm concerned, this is one of the best, if not the best, that currently uh, one can have in mirrorless cameras. We mentioned the IBIS uh, a few times already. I have to say that for me personally, the mode that works best is the boost mode. Doesn't matter if it's just standing still or walking and filming, in both the camera performed quite well. How about the low light capabilities of the new camera? As far as I'm concerned, I was able to work up to 10,000 ISO and still I think the image and the footage were absolutely usable. Of course, it gets noisy, but this is the type of noise that doesn't interrupt me. It doesn't have this chroma noise where you have those colorful microblocks all over the place. Yeah, this is really ugly. But with the camera here, uh, noisy, but absolutely usable. Of course, the camera has all the film simulations that Fujifilm currently make, including the Eterna, which is really my favorite. But this also brings me to another subject, and this is the internal 8-bit recording. I think across the line, in all Fujifilm cameras, 8-bit internal recording is a little bit problematic. I don't think it really grades well if you use F-Log, including in this camera. Even Fujifilm's own eternal LUT, and that's what I did in this film, you still can get, especially when it's a flat color surface. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's blue, doesn't matter if it's skin tone, white, whatever it is, you're always risking yourself that you might have those kind of color patches. So you have two options, either to work with a film simulation um, uh, built in, for example, you can already decide to, to film with Eterna, then the image will be quite nice, but you are compromising on the dynamic range. I think you're losing, uh, in our test, I think it was about one and a half stops uh, of dynamic range that you will lose while working, for example, with Eterna. Another option is, of course, to uh, record externally. And if you are recording externally, then you're moving already into the 10-bit uh, arena. And that means that uh, things will look even better and much easier to create. Let's talk a little bit about the film that we just saw. So my aim was actually to see if I can really come up with a very compact yet affordable anamorphic solution. So what I did, this is the new XS10. Next to it, I was using the Fujinon XC 15-45mm, and this is by far my favorite documentary lens. I know for some people, it will never be on their agenda because they're looking for pure uh, optical quality. For me, when I'm running and gunning, I also have to think about being fast and being very comfortable, and most important, not to intimidate the person I'm actually filming. So a combination like this will work perfectly. This specific lens has been with me all over the world. Yeah, it never failed, never let me down. I love what I see. Yeah. And of course, it can be sometimes a, a little bit soft in the edges, but because it's not a very fast lens, it started uh, f3.5, uh, it, it's actually avoiding those, it's actually quite easy to avoid the, the soft edges. Now, if I combine it with SLR Magic, this is an anamorphic adapter, which really works well with uh, lenses where the diameter is not so big. It can also work in autofocus mode, which is a really a big uh, advantage. So I simply match those two together, and all I had to do is change a little bit the focal length, otherwise I completely vignette if I use on the 15 millimeter side of the lens, so I have to zoom in a little bit. But then from a certain point, the image is completely clean, and then I can uh, zoom even a bit more, 
in case I need this flexibility and change my focal length. So this combination together uh, kept me really on a budget. This adapter, the SLR Magic uh, Anamorphic adapter, adapter Compact, is now being sold for $400, if I'm not mistaken. And the lens itself, you can not find it everywhere as a standalone product, but it will come as bundled together with the camera. So, time to conclude. I think Fujifilm did a really good job with this new camera. I mean, for $999, you get a camera that can do a lot. So I think the value for money is really good here. Uh, top it up with that specific lens, the 15 to 45 millimeter. And if you like some anamorphic look, the SLR Magic anamorphic adapter, I think this is a very, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a nice starter kit. It's really fun, it's really, it's really nice just to run around and film. Okay, guys, this is for today. Uh, much more is coming in the next days. And I would like to thank you again for being with us. And please, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you, guys.